Hi everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Nimbus here, with an episode of Magic Jewels. So for my first Kaladesh deck tech, I'm going to be running one of the new, um, kind of one of the new mechanics, which is uh, the vehicle and pilot uh, decks. So this deck is filled with lots of dwarfs and one lowly human pilot. Uh, these guys are basically here to crew these artifact vehicles, such as Smuggler's Copter, Cultivator's Car Caravan, and Renegade Freighter. So they have some of these pilots have cool abilities like giving your vehicles first strike, haste, and just general buffs as well. Also, we've got lots of dwarves. Reason being is that Depala, pilot exemplar, she's a dwarf, and whenever she taps down to crew a vehicle, we get to search up for dwarves and vehicles. So I packed out the deck with as many dwarves as possible so that we could search them up. Okay, so uh, let's go through the deck. So to begin with, we've got Toolcraft Exemplar. He's a one white mana one one. Uh, he is uncommon, no rare, sorry, because he's uh, got the gold symbol. So we can only have two of them in the deck anyway. But at the beginning of combat, we can uh, turn, a, we can give a Toolcraft Exemplar plus two plus one until end of turn. Uh, and also if we control three or more artifacts, he also gains first strike as well. So we can use him to either just swing or crew, uh, crew our vehicles as well, which is quite nice. Plus he's a dwarf, so synergizes up with the parlor. Next we have Gear Shift Ace, so the first of our pilots, who is a 2 mana 2 1 with first strike, so already quite a nice creature on his own. Best bit about him though is whenever he crews a vehicle, that vehicle gains first strike, which is awesome. Next we've got a Speedway Fanatic, so the card you always want to see on turn 2 uh, with this deck, because basically what this allows you to do on turn 3 is give any vehicle that you play on turn 3 haste immediately. So. He has haste himself, so you can swing for two damage on turn two. Turn three, you can tap him down to a vehicle you've just played out, give it haste, and swing straight away. So it's a really awesome pilot card. Next, we have Veteran Motorist. Hate the artwork on this card. It's really weird. Don't like it at all. But uh, apart from that, it's a really good card. So it's a one red mana, one white mana, three one. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you get to scry two, which is really useful. I often like seeing this on turn two as well, especially if I've got a... Uh, a suboptimal hand after my first couple of draws. Uh, it's always nice to see Veteran Motorist, which allows me to scry up, you know, chuck things to the bottom of the library that I don't want to keep. Also, whenever he crews a vehicle, that vehicle gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Next, we have the first of the vehicles, which is Smuggler's Copter. It's a 2-2, two, two, uh, sorry, 2-mana, two 3-3 three, three flying vehicle. Um, and whenever it attacks, uh, we may uh, draw a card, and if we do so, we have to discard a card. It's only got a crew one, so basically any of our creatures will crew this vehicle which is quite nice on their own you don't need multiple creatures for this one next up we have uh, two only two copies of the glint sleeve artisan he's a three mana two two with fabricate one so most of the time i'll be playing him as a three three creature which is quite nice and then i tend to just use him to crew vehicles or attack if i need to next we've got depala She's one of the lords of this deck, so basically she's a uh, one red, one white, co one colourless, three three uh, pilot. So with, when she's in play, all of our other, all of our other dwarves get plus one plus one, so automatically pretty awesome. Uh, each vehicle we control gets plus one plus one while it's a creature. Also, like I said, whenever she becomes tapped, we can pay X mana. If we do, we reveal the top X cards of our library, and we get to put all dwarf vehicle, uh, dwarf and vehicle cards from among them into our hand, and then the rest on the bottom of our library. So she's just a really cool card, you know, just a general buff across the board for almost all of our creatures, and also the ability to search up for more if we need to. Next we have Cultivator's Caravan. This is probably one of the most important cards in this deck. It's a 3 mana 5-5 five five vehicle. So, you know, 3 mana for a 5-5 five five is really quite crazy. Plus, the best bit about this vehicle is that we can actually use it as a ramp card. So for 3 mana, we can actually, instead of using it as, a, as an attacking creature, we can just use it as the ability to tap down for 1 mana of any colour in our mana pool. It is great. It is a really good card. Even if you don't use it as a vehicle, you want to use it as a ramp card. Just, be, just because of that ability to tap down for any color of mana. Next we have Renegade Freighter, so another good three drop vehicle. So uh, with this particular card, it's a four three. Uh, whenever it becomes a, uh, so whenever it attacks, sorry, it gains plus one plus one and gains trample until end of turn. So quite often you're playing this as a five four trample creature. Only got a crew of two, so we can basically again play it out with almost all of our creatures. Um, uh, sorry, we can crew it with almost all of our creatures on their own without the need to deploy multiple creatures to crew it. Yeah, one of you pointed out that I did misunderstand, misunderstand the crew mechanic, and it is total power. So, um... So you can actually tap down like two one drops and that also one tough one power creatures and that would be able to crew the renegade freighter so i did misunderstand that while doing my analysis of the deck only three copies of that just because um you know we we don't need all, all four copies we've got plenty of other vehicles in the deck 
Next we have Visionary Augmenter, so another dwarf. She's an artificer, so again with the Fabricate, so she will come down as a 4-3. Don't really need to use the servos in this deck. I more want to, you know, create some biggish creatures. So she's just there as a, uh, as, a, as a bit of a body herself and the ability to cruise some of the bigger vehicles on her own. Next we have Fleet Wheel Cruiser. I do like this card. It's a 4 mana 5-3. When it comes into the battlefield, it become, automatically becomes an artifact creature for the turn. So you can basically drop it. It's got Trample and Haste, so you can swing for 5 damage straight away with a lot of Trample for only 4 mana. Plus you can then obviously keep activating it and uh, giving it Trample all the time as well. It's amazing how many of these vehicles have Trample. Um, so the next one up is Oval Chase Dragster, so another haste creature, so you can crew it straight away. Only requires a crew of one. It's a 6-1 Trample haste creature, so just the ability to push through a lot of damage very, very easily. Next up, we have only two copies of the Bom Bomat Bazaar Barge, so it's a 4-mana 5-5 five, five vehicle. When it enters the battlefield, it allows us to draw a card, so a little bit of uh, card draw in the deck. It does require a crew of three, so it requires um, a couple of our bigger creatures, oh, sorry, a couple of our smaller creatures or one of our bigger creatures. Probably the best card in this deck, I, I know I say this a lot, but the best card in this deck is Start Your Engines. Four mana, sorcery spell, play at the, play at the beginning of the turn. Vehicles you control become artifact creatures until end of turn. When, this, when you play this card, you don't have to crew any of your vehicles for the turn. It is phenomenal. If you've got four or five of your biggest vehicles in play this card is incredible but and also all your other creatures get plus two zero plus your vehicles so say for example you've got two of these bomb out bomb out bizarre barges and two of these oval chase dragsters uncrewed you play out start your engines you suddenly got two seven fives and two eight ones swinging it, it's incredible this card it's it's amazing some of the uh, the swings you can get it is really great so yeah, this is the card that you want to see when you have lots of your vehicles in play. Sky Sovereign Console Flagship, the uh, one, oh, sorry, the second legendary in this deck, I think um, is, no, she's a, she's a, she's a rare, so you do, do you get two copies of that. So the one, uh, sorry, the one mythic rare we have in this deck is the Sky Sovereign Console Flagship. It's a five mana, six, five vehicle. Whenever it comes into play, we get to deal three damage to target creature or planeswalker so you know it's it's a really good utility card deal with planeswalkers deal with creatures we also get to do that every time it attacks as well also it's only got a crew a crew, <laughs> a crew of three so you can probably power it with quite a few of our creatures if they're buffed up very slightly or with a couple of our bigger ones so yeah this is a really nice card i do like sky sovereign console flagship it is a good card Next we have one copy of the Aradara Express, and you know, this is an uncommon, uh, sorry, this is a common rather, but it's quite, you know, it's quite more situational. It's a 5 mana 8, 6, but it has a crew of 4, so it would require a couple of smaller creatures usually to play this, but if you can get this in play, it does have Menace, so it's just like these two are kind of some late game drops um, with a potential big payoff if you can uh, if you can swindle it. And then finally to finish off with, we've got one of the Metalwork Colossi. So... With all the vehicles in play, this one will basically cost very, very little. So if, say, for example, you've got these two in play, it costs one mana. So it's really good. It's just a nice big drop, nice big 10-10. And we can also sacrifice two art, uh, artifacts and return Metalwork Colossus from our graveyard to our hand as well. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just a good card. In terms of the mana base, we've got eight of each of the plains and the mountains, just because we're fairly even. Uh, we've got then got two of each of the uh, dual lands, corresponding to the red and the white. And then finally, we've got the Inventor's Fair. So uh, at the beginning of our upkeep, if we control three or more artifacts, we gain one life. So really good if we've got lots of vehicles that we can play out. We can also obviously use it to tap for mana. Then uh, the uh, the great thing about this is that we can also sacrifice it and search for a, search our library for an artifact card. So we can use this to search up for one of our vehicles as well. So it's just a, a good utility card there for a deck like this. Okay, that is the deck, guys. Let's go play some games. Okay, guys, here we are for game number one. I'm already ranked seven as I've been play testing this deck and won quite a few games already. Uh, I will double check who we're playing in a second. This is not too bad an opening hand. We can go for the Toolcraft Exemplar into Smuggler's Copter, and then we've obviously got the Aradara Express for later on. Oops a daisy. Just get you down. Oops a daisy. My god, the game's, you know, lagging a little bit here. So we're playing EGT underscore six, a fellow rank seven for the moment. You know, the rank the, the ladder got reset, so don't worry about my rank. It's not as though I've suddenly lost 30 ranks um, since uh, the last video. Those of you who actually play the game should realise that. I have had one person point out in the past that was like, why have you lost so many ranks? It's like, because the ladder got reset. <laughs> it's a new season. 
I'll be playing this this particular season until um, what's the one I'm looking for? Um, until January when Ether Revolt comes out. Okay, so we can now play out the Smuggler's Copter. Can't swing with it this turn. Can't crew it because you know it's got summoning sickness. Uh, these do summon. These do suffer from summoning sickness, as you can see. You can tap it down, but I don't see the point. So this one will get the buff because we now control an artifact. So it'll become a 3-2 creature instead, so that's a much better play there, which is why we wanted to play out the Smuggler's Copter pre-combat. I'm almost half tempted with the Smuggler's Copter ability to just toss away the Aradara Express, as we're not really going to be able to use it anytime soon. And I would rather almost keep the mana for uh, playing out some of our other artifacts maybe, later on, maybe. We'll see how it goes though. I may just toss away one of the mana, see what we draw on our next uh, draw step before deciding whether or not to uh, use Smuggler's Copter's ability. Okay, we've got white and black so far, but not really much else from our opponent. Ooh, we do have the Metalwork Colossus, which is quite nice. So let's play out the planes. I think we will crew this. Does exactly the same damage, so it's not as though we're losing out on anything by crewing this. Plus, we do get the ability to. Um, so, as you can see, it becomes a 3 2. So, it's going to swing for 3, and we are going to use its ability because we'd like to search up for something. Uh, ooh, we've got Depala. So, yeah, I'm probably going to toss away the Needle Spires here. Needle Spires, or do we toss away the Arada Ex Aradara Express? Now, I think I'm going to toss away the Needle Spires. Because it's just too slow. Uh, and then we can actually play out a Depala Pilot Exemplar. Very nice. There we go. So you can see both of our uh, both of our creatures have now got the plus one plus one from Depala's um, anthem. Not really an anthem, I suppose. It's just more of a general buff, isn't it? I can't remember what, what's the way you describe that. Because an anthem's more of a, something that would get played, that, that would trigger on something. Whereas uh, it's more of just a general overall buff to all my creatures. See, so yeah, if we do find a fifth mana again, I will be able to get Aradara Express out, which will just make this a four drop. Okay, we have got Oath of Liliana, so he's going to be able to for he's going to force me to sacrifice one of my creatures. I'm obviously going to sacrifice a Toolcraft Exemplar, as that is the uh, the worst <laughs> the worst of our two creatures there. Okay, oh, very nice. We've actually got our fifth mana, so we can get Aradara Express down now. So what I'm going to do here is, in this case, it's definitely better to crew my crew my Smuggler's Copter. Uh, so we shall pay. Should we pay for? Yeah, I'll pay four. So it's going to last to search up. Wow, that was awesome. Another Smuggler's Copter and a double veteran motorist. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Oh, yeah, he's viewing the cards, of course. So we get to put all three of these cards into our hand. Fantastic. Very good indeed. That is really, really good there. I've not actually used um, Depala's. There we go. So he, he has now viewed them. I don't think I've ever actually used Depala's um, tap ability before to to do that. But uh, so we could have probably almost got away with just using two. Uh, um, yeah, we may as well do it. Do we want to keep start your engines in case instead of one of the veteran motorists? Or maybe even no. I think we'll toss away the smuggler's copter. We've already got one of them. I'd rather have one of the big ones, the Aradara, Aradara Express. There we go. Also, what I found out is what you can actually do to crew, say, for example, this Aradara Express. Right now, we don't have a, a, a four-power creature. What we can do, however, is we can crew our Smuggler's Copter, becomes a 4-4, four -four, and actually use that to crew our Aradara Express, which is kind of crazy. Yes, you can crew vehicles with other vehicles. It's a little bit ridiculous. I'm not sure if that's a glitch. I'm not sure if that's a bug or not, but... Uh, it's kind of funny. So we do have Gisela the Broken Blade. So let's get the fifth mana down here. Now what do we do here? Do we just go for the Aradara Express? I think we probably do here. Just so we can go for a big start your engines next turn maybe. He's going to gain four health back if he swings with... Uh, Gisela though. So we'll go back up to 14, but then we'll be swinging with quite a lot. So I think I'm going to go for that. I'm wondering, 
Uh, we're gonna, I think we're going to crew this. We're going to see if we can push through that four damage. We obviously won't have any mana to play, but that's fine. Not the end of the world. I'm assuming he... Oh, actually, I've just realised that's got first strikes. That's actually a really silly idea. I've made a huge mistake there. I forgot that has first strike, so... Uh, almost made a silly mistake there. I was like, yeah, that's a really good idea. And then, like, no, it would not have been a good idea. It would have given him four health, and we would have lost one of our artifact creatures. So uh, let's not do that. And we also have Obnixilis, so... So he's going to be able to destroy my uh, Depala. Not the end of the world. We're probably going to get Metalwork Colossus and Veteran Motorist down next turn. Just because we can. And then go for a big start your engines turn the turn afterwards. How much saying that? How much damage have I got? I've got... Ah, he did get a zombie though. Crap. I was hoping that... Um... How did he get a zombie? Oh yeah, because he's got a planeswalker, of course. Um, okay, so let's go for a veteran. I, I apologise, guys. The phone's ringing. I'll be right back. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, I will just get to the end of this and then figure out who was phoning me. So let me play out the... Let's play out the veteran motorist here. Okay. We've got the Glint Sleeve Artisan. I can't think we'll keep that on top, because why not? And then we'll also go for the Metalwork Colossus. I'm gonna try I'm probably gonna swing for three four damage here. Three damage here with the smuggler's copter. So let me tap you down. There we go. Swing for three this turn. Oh no, sorry, swing for four, because this pumps up uh any vehicle it crews by plus one plus one, which is very nice. Uh, yeah, we'll swing for his face, and then we'll we'll go for lethal next turn with a start your engines. Um, yeah, I think we'll toss away one of these. Yeah, we got we got a second one, so that's fine. So push through four damage. Marvelous. So he might be able to get back up to fourteen, but uh, that'll be okay. Okay, so he's got an Evolving Wilds. Not really too fussed by that. So what's next? I'm assuming he's probably going to uh, swing with Gisela. Sorry, I went quiet for a second there. I was uh, being very pensive. Uh, somebody's been... I think what I figured out the, the phone call was about was about a job. So I've got to, got to figure... Gotta call back in a second. Okay. So this guy is just thinking about something. What is he thinking about? This is uh, quite a long, gone, this match has gone quite a long while. Might just be a one game today, just because uh, I've got to go pick my wife up uh, in a little bit, so from work. So is he gonna attack? He's gonna double attack, very brave, very brave. Uh, yeah, we're gonna block you, I think. So he's gonna get the four damage, uh, sorry, he's gonna get the four life. We are gonna kill that zombie though, so we should only get one zombie back from this. See what he does. Okay, come on, come on, fella. Hurry up, Mr. EGT6. Okay, so he's done nothing there. Oh, we actually got another Depala. Very nice, but I think we're just going to go for a big old start your engine swing here. Start your engines. He surely can't be able to counter this. Or is this him just conceding? We are swinging for rather a lot of damage here. Look at that. 12, 10, 10, 6, 5, 3, Blessed Alliance. Target opponent sacrifices an attacking creature. Ooh, looks like we got a badass over here. I was expecting something like a Blessed Alliance, but uh, I still don't think that's going to stop us. Does he gain life from that? 
Gains four life, untap up to two target creatures, target opponent sacrifices an attacking creature. Okay, so maybe we just sacrifice... Um, you? So he did not... No, I won't use, I won't use that ability. I think we've still got enough damage here, even if he blocks like that one, for example. We'll go up to 17, but we'll still be pushing through 22. Okay, so it looks like that one's going to die. So I don't think we will be pushing... Nah, we won't be quite pushing through enough damage here now. That's a shame. That's a shame. Uh, oh, yeah, we'll have the start your engines, please, next turn. That's kind of hilarious, because he knows I've tossed one away, but he won't know that I've just put one on top of my library to swing with again. So yeah, that's that's that's, that's going to be a really good, uh, really good finisher again. Okay, or he could just you know drop a uh, drop a sorin. So he could just kill that one. No, we don't need we don't need to crew it. I'll be fine. This is this is him. This is him basically losing here because he can yeah he can destroy our metalwork colossus, but we have a second start your engines about to make its way onto the battlefield. This won't matter because we've got uh, the menace on you. So start your engines. I I might say that every time. Uh, <laughs> I might say that every time this, this comes into play. Now there we go. So we're just going to push through for lethal. But either of these would, would push through for lethal here. So uh, and there we go. So he's left the game. Okay, guys. So unfortunately, I would like to play one more game, but I don't actually have the time today. So I'm just going to round off the episode here really quick. Up to rank 8, very nice. So yeah, that is my Dwarf and Vehicle. Uh, it's a pretty aggressive deck, as you can see. You know, we're, we're always going for the face more than anything. You know, not real much control there. So it's a lot of speed, a lot of aggression. So as always, guys, don't forget to comment and like if you enjoyed the episode. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.